Lord Jesus, we thank you for being in this house tonight. We praise your name and worship and praise, and we give thanks to our worship leaders, Jay and Anna. Thank you so much. And Pastor Andrew for making the evening possible here at Tree of Life. I thank you for the people bringing the meeting into the internet and making all the sound and everything happen here. No longer a slave to fear. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, this is a unique night. Some of us came expecting healing. Some of us came to declare that we're healed. Some of us are actually being healed right now. And uh, the songs we have seen, No Longer a Slave to Fear, Healing Rain Falling Down. I know there's probably five churches present here, but if you'll look around, you're going to see people that you may not have seen before. And this is a unique evening. This won't, this won't reoccur in any time or space. So I invite you to look at someone next to you and say, you know, God is healing you. We're claiming it. Thank you, Jesus. God is healing us. God is a God of promises that he fulfills, and we thank him. We thank him for his amazing, amazing promises and the fulfillment of his promises. Some of us are grieving tonight because we lost a dear family member, and we ask the Lord to come upon Nick and his family and give them rest and peace and strength and courage. And tonight we have some folks who have testimonies of, of uh, praise and thanksgiving, and there'll be an opportunity for that. We have two very special ladies here. So you have come, and you're going to hear a new message because God's doing a new thing. There are children in Collier County that have no clue that anyone loves them. And some of these children have never even experienced love. Can you imagine that? So our asking is that we would have the prayers of tonight and the message of love for these children to be carried by the good Lord and delivered to these children through the ladies who will present to you tonight, Bonnie B. and Frankie Hendricks, and tell you the ministry that the Lord has put on their heart. So if there's an offering to give on your heart, the asking tonight is that you would bless these people in their ministry because there is a need. And Christian Healing Center heart has been broken by the messages these ladies have brought to us, and it's an honor to bring the messages to you tonight and to me. Some of you have come from a long way to be here tonight. Please, in your desperation for love and healing, take that love and healing with you tonight and give it to the next person you see. Amen? Christian Healing Center is a safe place to come for healing prayer. There's cards out front. You can call for an appointment. There's uh, bracelets that we've been giving for years that are anointed for healing, and they're free. They're at the tables out front. The lady who makes them is here tonight, and uh, she would be delighted if there were no bracelets left in the uh, <laughs> front room when she goes through. Uh, Bonnie B. has books that are available to you, and so... Um, Let's see, our next meeting will be August 18th. It's a Thursday, and we're being invited to Celebration Church, our first time to be invited there. We're so excited about that, so if you'll keep that in prayer. And we're so glad to be here at Tree of Life, which has been such a dear friend of Christian Healing Center since before we even opened. So I thank you, God, for Frankie and Bonnie. Um, they've got this all worked out. I have no idea how this is working, but I think it's working because God's in it. So please welcome Frankie and Bonnie. Hi. Well, Bonnie, I'm going to let you go first. Okay. <laughs> so, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Bonnie B, and um, I am a mother of five and grandmother of three. Um, I've, this last week, I, the scripture that kept coming to me was, um, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And I 
kept hearing that scripture, and as that, I kept pondering what he wanted me to do with that scripture. Um, things started coming against me to prevent me from being here tonight. Um, my daughter, I have a 31-year-old daughter who has struggled for, 30, for 13 years with alcoholism, and um, Saturday night she went into cardiac arrest and needed to be, she was brought back with an AED and um, was sedated and um, sh she's on the ventilator now and in the hospital. Um, and then through family drama that happens, I went to the hospital Monday morning to go see her and was quickly informed that her estranged husband had banned me from visiting her in the hospital. So some unchristian-like things came to me <laughs> as a mother that was very upset about the situation. But um, what came to me after was that um, what they meant for harm, God's going to use for good, that he loves her more, more than I do, and he is in the middle of this, and he is working, and then again kept coming to me I will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. So I can't let what that, what's happening there stop me from what I'm trying to do or what he's trying to do. So that being said, um, I grew up here in Southwest Florida. My, my parents divorced when I was about, two, about a year and a half and my mother brought me and my siblings down here to Southwest Florida and I had what a lot of people have a very dysfunctional childhood. I wouldn't say it was completely horrible, but it was, you know, definitely challenging. By the age of, I had um, domestic violence in the house, alcoholism. Um, I was molested and raped by the time I was 13 years old. Um, so lots of challenges. Um, I perpetuated the cycle by marrying into similar marriage that I was familiar with. Um, and then when I was about, when I was in my 20s, when things were, I was teaching all, all through this, I went to church. I, I was taken to church and at church, the message that I heard, now I'm not sure that this is necessarily the message that they wanted me to hear, but in the middle of what I was going through, the message I heard was the life I had was what God gave me and, you know, suck it up and deal with it. And someday in heaven, you'll be blessed because you dealt with it so well. You know, like it was just, that was what God wanted for me. And I just had to deal. And um, I taught Bible study or in, in churches with little children for, um, I, I worked in churches as nursery person and worked with the kids, so I knew all the stories of the Bible, and I knew, you know, all like Goliath and David and Goliath and Noah and all your typical stories, but I never knew God. I never knew, I never understood Jesus, why Jesus came, you know, all that, like that. I just never got anywhere. In my 20s, I... My, my marriage had become very volatile, extremely um, volatile. And I was driving home one day, and I had this vision of Jesus on the cross. And it was as if I was standing at the foot of the cross. And the, the picture of Jesus on the cross, the, the image of Jesus on the cross was so intense that I just was hysterical, hyperventilating, um, just angry with God, how could you do this to your child? Like, why do we deserve this? You know, like I didn't ask to be raped as a child. I didn't ask for, you know, these things to happen. Why is it that I deserved that and so you did it to your son? You know, like this was what I had heard growing up, you know? In, my translation of what was said. Um, and I was really angry. And I spent a lot of time wishing I was, wishing he would take me home. I wanted to be dead for a, a lot, you know, lots of, lots of prayers of, okay, if this is what you've got for me, I don't want it. Take me home. I'm, I'm done. Um, prayers. Um, 
In 2000, I started working at the sheriff's office in Collier County, answering 911 calls, and I started I'm answering 911 calls and domestic violence calls, and I am listening to what the callers are saying, and I'm like, you called 911 for this? You should have been at my house last night, you know? <laughs> and then I started, like, after a little, a couple times, I'm like, okay, then there must be something wrong with my house if these people are calling for help, you know, and this is, like, normal in my world. Like, okay, so what's the problem, right? And I started to, like, assess, like, Okay, like the I start. There's something I'm missing, right? If if they're calling for help in a situation that I'm used to, there's something that's not right, right? So I started to reevaluate my life. Um, fast forward in 2009, I um, went to a well, 2007, I went to a, the academy, became a deputy, a law enforcement officer, and um, by 2009, I was getting a divorce, and. I came to this, I, I picked up a book. I was in my back seat of my mom's car and I was honestly trying to just distract myself from the conversation that was happening in the car and she had a book in the back seat and I started reading it and it was a Christian fiction novel. And, um, and at the time, I really didn't wanna have anything to do with God. I was kind of, you know, just like, I'm just done. If this is what he wants for my life, I don't really wanna, you know, have that conversation with him. But I picked up this book and I started reading it. And in the book, I remember it talking about us being a child of God. And like, not directly, because it was fiction, but it would talk about, bring scriptures up, you know, and, and bring up the fact that I was a child of God or we are a child of God. And I started um, thinking, okay, all right, if I'm a child of God, if, if this is how he sees me you know, as a child of God, now with my understanding of how a parent loves a child, because at that time, and now I had five children of my own, so my five children had taught me what healthy love looks like through my love for them, right? So I started, you know, okay, if God loves me like I love my children, even more so, even more perfectly than I love my children, then is this the life that I would want my child to live? And the answer was no. Right? Like, no, I wouldn't want my child to live in that unhealthy environment. So this must not be what God wants for me. Right? And so I started to understand that our life is what we choose, not so much what God chooses. You know, like God try. you know, he works at it and he's got a plan for our life, but we get to come alongside him and, and get to the purpose that he has for us if we so choose. Um, but I had never learned that, right? So I started to learn. At that point, I, was, it was, I started to learn, and he started pouring into my life, and I started, I started, I had this insane hunger for his word at that point where I just wanted anything and everything I could get of his word. And I, I heard a sermon one day about how, um, you know, about the fall, and how what is on the earth, the things that are bad are not of God, and everything that is good is of God, right? And, and God doesn't put cancer on us, um, but he knows it's coming because he sees everything and he's prepared us for it, and he wants, he sent Jesus so we could be healed from that cancer, right? And, and helped me like better understand that he's not sending these bad things into my life. He is trying his best to help me overcome the bad things that have come into my life. Well, as I began to understand that, my 10-year-old son at the time, um, I took him to the hospital and the doctors told me he was dying. Um, his bone marrow was failing and he needed a bone marrow transplant as quickly as possible. So off I went to the hospital, um, oncology, and, and I sat and watched all these babies that are struggling with diseases, and I, my heart just oh, died because I'm just like, you know, how is it that they didn't ask for this? You know, they didn't ask for this thing that, as they didn't do anything to receive this, you know, this is just put upon them. So I helped friends bury children, and I just 
my, I couldn't understand. I'm like, okay, God, like, why'd you put me here? You know, my son, luckily, by the grace of God, he had aplastic anemia and had a 10 for 10 donor match and flew through everything and is 100% recovered. So by the grace of God, like, I was blessed through the experience of just the experience. Um, and, and my son came out stronger than ever. Um, yes, thank, like, it's just totally by the grace of God. But I went from there to at work. I went back to work. And when I was able, as soon as I was able, I went back to work. And they put me and they assigned me to an elementary school. And in the elementary school, I started to hear these stories about these children that, um, just horrible stories about what people were doing to children and what they were living in. And um, my heart just, again, broke for these children. They didn't ask for this. They didn't do anything to deserve this. You know, how is it that these things are happening to these children? And um, one specifically, a nine-year-old girl, her, her stepfather had forced her to perform um, sexual acts on him. And, he, and she was asked if she thought her um, sister had had the same thing done to her. And her answer was, you know, my sister still dances and sings and plays and laughs. Um, I, don't, I don't think this has happened to her. And like for me, that a nine-year-old, for th- to be able to understand that, like just blew my mind that a nine-year-old could, could get that. You know, and then one day, a one of the um, principal's assistants came in and put a note on my desk that was about a sexual act that had been performed on a four-year-old, and the four-year-old was sent to just sent to school with a doctor's note that she might be uncomfortable because of this, and um, I that day ended up under my desk in tears, God, why did you put me here? You know, like, I don't understand why you've put me in this place to feel these things. And um, at that moment, he put me back at the foot of Jesus's cross. And he said, this is why I sent my son, because none of you chose this world. And I needed to give you a way to overcome it. And In that moment, I understood why Jesus came and why he allowed the things to have, the horrible things to happen to Jesus because he knew we needed a way to overcome the horrible things that were gonna happen to the people of this world. And um, so I wanted to have a house and take all the kids home with me and just love them and, and show them Jesus's love and I still want to do that, and someday God will grant me with that house. Um, but right now, we've, we've created a program. My work, in, at work, I, I began to um, go to training that taught me how traumatizing childhood trauma is to the development of a child's brain. I've seen uh, the brain scan of a healthy three-year-old child next to the brain scan of a three-year-old child that's lived in domestic violence, and you can see the difference because every time that child goes into fight or flight, the, to- the, um, t- the um, stress hormones that are released in their body is stressful on their brain, and it actually does damage to the way their brain is developed. But God made us resilient. And if we are able to have enough positive interactions and enough positive experiences, we can heal from that trauma. The problem is is if we don't get to it soon enough, as their brain develops and is is fully developed, then those traumas get kind of stuck in there and not to mention the learned behavior and everything is just so much more difficult to overcome. Not that it's impossible to overcome, but the the longer that children are in those situations without the positive influences of of others, the the more likely it is going to be that they're stuck to perpetuate the cycle. 
um, working at the sheriff's office when I would pull up people who are our regulars, you know, that were like being arrested all the time or being in mental health all the time or, you know, if you go back and you look at their histories, every single one of them has one thing in common, they have childhood traumas. Um, so my training also taught me that if we can develop a program where we are inundating these kids with more positive um, atmosphere, you know, through animal interactions and, and farming and um, hands-on program, that we can help to, to help them overcome what they're doing physiologically. We can, we can help them to release the positive chemicals in their brain, so we help their brain to heal. And in the process, we can show them what healthy love looks like. We can show them Jesus with skin on and, and help them, because I was, I was, try, I was explaining this to um, Mike. So, so it's kind of like you don't understand the language. So imagine if you are, if you, your family spoke Spanish the whole, your whole life, and then you were thrown into an English environment, you don't understand what anybody's saying. Um, it's the same concept as far as when somebody's lived in dysfunction their whole life, that's what they understand, so that's what they gravitate to because that's what's comfortable to them as, as unhealth, like I did, like I perpetuated my cycle and my daughter has perpetuated her cycle and it's, you just, that's the language you understand is that um, dysfunction and fear environment. So helping the kids to learn a new language of love that is, that is trust and respect um, is, is critical to their success. Um, and I, so I, my printer this morning, I, or today was another day, it was like, I'm like, okay, God, like, why is it all these things are happening? But I tried to print stuff out and it didn't work very well. But I was able to get scriptures that um, like jumped out at me. Um, these commandments that I give to you, that I give you today are to be on your hearts, impress them on your children, which there are so many children that they're not hearing it. They're, they're in a place where they don't know, just like, you know, even some that do go to church but aren't understanding what church is all about. And Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Start children off on the way they should go and even when they're old, they will not turn from it. He took a little child then, and next one, he took a little child whom he, Jesus took a little child whom he placed them, placed among them, taking the child in his arms. He said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome, does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. And then, in James, religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and keep oneself unstained from the world. And then learn to do good, seek justice, correct, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless and plead the widow's cause. Father of the fatherless and protector of the widows is God in his holy habitation. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And there's so many, there's hundreds of scriptures in the Bible about children. And, and I truly believe if you want to stop the things that are going on in the world today or, or help the things that are, we have to work on everybody's heart and it has to start with the children. Um, I have this book, it's called Turn Your, or Life Happens, Turn Your Mess Into Your Message. Um, it's just my story and my walk with Jesus um, that's out on the table. All proceeds go to, um, to the ranch, and there are $15 or more. Everything goes to, to the ranch and to the program. And Frankie's going to tell you a little bit about what her pro I, So Mike introduced me to Frankie, which is like blows me away because her vision for her program is just like my vision for my program. Um, what I want to create is a Monday through Friday, five-day private school for kids that are struggling with behavioral and emotional issues. And, um, you know, 
minimum of a year, maximum of three years, and we give them the opportunity to, to heal and then put them back in the classroom where they, then they can be successful instead of you know, medicating them and making them sit still. You know, we can, we can help them to overcome things before they get to go to the classroom. Um, Frankie, I needed property. I had the vision, God gave me the vision, and I was like, I, okay, I'll do whatever you say. And he puts little pieces in front of me, and I do the little pieces, and I trust that he's gonna give me another piece, but I had no property to do this vision on. <laughs> and um, God gave me Frankie. <laughs> so Frankie's gonna just tell you what a little bit about what she's already doing and how our visions um, mesh together so incredibly well. So come talk about what you're doing. Is it okay. On? Can you guys hear me? Thank you so much, Bonnie. I've been reading Bonnie's book. I really highly recommend it. Um, grab a box of tissue and just soak it in. Um, Bonnie did say um, in her book that one thing that stood out to me is kids need a place. And I think they found it. Yeah. Um, I was able to make a few notes, so I'm going to try to... I'm still in camp mode, you know. I just left camp, and the kids, we've had a great day. Um, the rain song that you sang, I have a camper. Every time it rains, he runs around outside, and he's... He's trying to catch the drops. I'm running behind him with an umbrella. Where are you going, Santi? Get back over here. Anyway, um, you know, lightning strikes and all kinds of things happen, you know. So it's, uh, it's awesome to see kids and their heart. And it's really awesome and a privilege to be working with children. And I thank Pastor Andrew for allowing us to speak tonight. And um, Mike, wow, what a divine appointment that we've had. Um, we knew that God was doing something, but we just really didn't know what. And now we know. This is, is it's really amazing. So I get the opportunity to share tonight. I am not a public speaker. I haven't written any books yet, but I'm used to speaking to an audience of 4 to 12-year-olds. So that's the way I'm going to approach this tonight, which means usually you have about one minute per year to grab them and keep their attention. And if you haven't done that, then, you know. So now I'm speaking to adults. We could be here for a while. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so typically what I try to do when I teach the kids and, and interact with them is to give them something that they can really relate to and keep them entertained and engage them um, to participate and and really just try to be a full-on camper, you know, and experience everything. Um, so one of the first things um, I would like to do is kind of just share with you what a, a camp director's day like. So if you would all put your cell phones in a basket, you can have them back at snack time, okay? Just kidding, I brought snacks. They're on your chair. Um, in Genesis, it says, be fruitful and multiply. So on some of your chairs, you have a little fruit snack. And if you have your cell phones, that's another thing that kids cannot let go of. So if you have your cell phone out and you would like to participate as a camper, you can get your phone out and turn to a calculator app. And I'll give you a little rundown on what it's like to be a camp director. So... You can enjoy your little fruit snack while I share this with you. But being a camp director is 12-hour days. If you put the 12-hour days in your calculator, multiply that times five days a week for 10 weeks straight. Does anybody have an answer for that? That's over, yeah, 600 hours of spending the entire summer with the same group of kids. Yeah. That is a lot of fun. So the problem is those hours have to be broken down in 15-minute increments to keep their attention. So when you have 4-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 
do the math. It adds up to be over 2,400 activities and 7,200 total hours as a whole that God just multiplies for having, on the average, 12 kids at camp. So when you look at it and you condense it all into summer, and you have summer break, camps make a difference. It makes a huge difference. If you take a child who goes to church on a regular basis, I would say maybe a good two hours a week, maybe on a Wednesday night in a Sunday service. That's 52 weeks in a year. So that's 104 hours. It would take five and a half years of going to church to make up what you can get one summer at camp. That gives us opportunity. That gives us opportunity to reach a lot of kids. But we can't do it alone. That's where my volunteers come in. I love my volunteers. We have the best volunteers. And I'm going to share a little bit of multiplication for you guys. This is specifically for you. When you volunteer your 100 hours at our camp, you are such a blessing to the community. You have no idea. It gives us some comfort. It gives us a time to take a break, to relax for a few minutes. You guys keep the kids motivated. You're good mentors. They look up to you. And your 100 hours converts to $215 for Bright Future Scholarships for your college tuition. And I am very proud to announce that the president and the vice president, and are you in the leadership of, of your honor society? The Spanish Honor Society is here tonight. And I just wanted to give a little shout out to them because they have met... Um, charter recognition for the work that they've done at the camp. And there's a letter on the table out there. You guys have to read all about it. So you guys are amazing. Thank you for coming tonight. It means a lot to me. So anyway, be fruitful and multiply is what God says. So at the ROIC, we focus on recreation, outdoors, community, and kids. That's the, the rock. We take them on a journey through the Bible stories. We teach them the Bible basics and teach them, teach them character traits such as the fruit of the spirit, the love chapter, the armor of God. We have group discussions. We ask a lot of questions like who is Jesus? Why he came? When is he coming back? And we want them to be ready. We want them to understand it and we want to be, them to be able to defend their faith when they go back to school. We love to be outdoors. We love to be in nature. We like to plan activities that are back to, um, back to the basic type survival skills, like growing a garden, archery, fishing, going on nature hikes, becoming aware of your surroundings, discuss the native and the invasive species, the plant life, the animals, and what it's like to live in Southwest Florida. And then the C is for community. Community, to me, is about letting the kids and the families know that God loves them, but more so that they're loved by others outside their immediate family. They need to be surrounded by good influences and build trust with others, like our volunteers and the churches and other friends and family that are here tonight. Thank you guys so much for your support. I'm seeing Dan who's helped me paint the camp from day one you came out, and we started working together on that. And Julie, you always are just encouraging me with scripture all the time, and you're, and you're always supportive financially and in prayer and otherwise. Thank you for your heart, and I just love you so much. And it's just, it's just amazing what God is doing connecting this community, and it's the kingdom work that's being done. God is doing all of this, and, it, it, and his timing is so perfect. But anyway, um, you know, the community is for the kids. It takes a village to raise a child. It really does. And they need to grow up in that kind of atmosphere. And on my worst day at camp, 
with the most unruly child. I've never seen the things that you've seen. And I just, I'm thanking the Lord for you and your experience and what we can do for these kids in the future. Whew, that's a lot. Camps have a lasting effect. So the good news is, is this is what Scott's doing. Right now, here, tonight, we've already talked about how this connection is a divine and, and, and why each and every one of us is here tonight is for a reason. And way back in um, my backstory is in 2010, when the market crashed, <laughs> the Lord showed me that he's going to crash the mortgage industry just for me to find my purpose in life. And you know why I know it was my purpose in life? It's because I couldn't do it. When he gave me the idea to get into children's ministry and do a camp, all of a sudden I was inspired. I wanted to read all the Florida codes on child care. I, I enrolled in courses, early childhood development, and I was up all night. Carrie, you won't remember this, but you were little. <laughs> and we were just, I was just on fire to read this thick book of the Florida statutes on, on children and daycares and all this stuff and educate myself like you felt. I need to know. I need to study this. And God gave me that inspiration. And then, um, you know, time came for, um, you know, when the mortgage industry, industry crashed, I, I went to our pastor at our church and I said, you know, I, I need to get involved with kids ministry. And, you know, I had worked for years in the youth department and in the um, Sunday school classes and and I just feel like he has prepared us all our life for a time such as this. And so when I was writing my long-term vision, man, I was just like, yeah, I want land. We need a bus. Yeah, we need kids. We need buildings. We need cabins. We need water. We need resources. And things happen, you know, and you, you get so excited and you get pumped up and then it's just you know, you, and then you end up thinking, wow, you know, Lord, I, I really just can't do this by myself, and you get a little overwhelmed, and then you start asking people for help, and you know, a few will show up, and then most of the time, when you ask people to do something, you get real disappointed when they don't show up. I've got 20 shovels, and two people, and 10 hammers, and one person, not even a carpenter shows up, you know. So it is a labor. It's a labor of love. But my problem was I was asking people. And I wasn't asking the source. And once I realized I was asking the wrong person and I started asking God, he started moving. He has moved. And he is moving stronger today than ever before for these kids. And I'm going to tell you right now, Amen. I had an email come over on my laptop in October of last year. And it shook me to the core because I had been trying to decide how am I going to make it? Oh, Lord, you know, here I am on my knees again trying to build up for, you know, a new camp year and all this stuff. And I get an email from my neighbor who said, hey, Frankie, you remember that conversation years ago when, you know, the fire came and you, you had reached out to me and said that, you know, if I ever got ready to sell my land to let you be the first to know? And I'm like, woohoo, yay, that's awesome. You know, so he said, well, I'm letting you know. And the very same week, I was laid off on my job. So I'm like, thanks, God. What are you doing to me? And then I thought back, you know it's your purpose when you can't possibly do it, that you cannot see it happening on your own will, with your own resources. You've got to go to the source. So I'm going to the source tonight. I'm going to the source with Bonnie, and we really want to ask and pray for God to help these children. Camp has been different this year, and I know it. I've been working with kids for a long time. Bonnie knows it. I've shared some stories this one year that have 
surprised me because, you know, this is a good news camp. This is Jesus. Everybody's going to be love and happy and the fruits of the Spirit and all that. Well, the kids are different. Their minds can be changed with a swipe of a phone. It takes two or three seconds for them to, to just keep scanning or streaming or whatever it is that they're looking down at and trying to fit Jesus into what these kids are putting in their minds right now is nearly impossible to do without prayer and support from the community. They are so locked into their devices and I think the pandemic probably has a lot to do with that. They're expected to self-teach. They're expected to, you know, do their studies online. And they are trying to um, find themselves through the lens or through whatever it is that they're seeing on their phones. And um, it's really getting to a critical point, I think, at this point, that they need to have more recreation and they need to do a lot of things that, that keep them off of social media. Um, some of the kids uh, this year, and why I say that I've, I've seen things that I've never seen before, is that just out of a, a little, we had a situation where there was a little scuffle over a volleyball. And one of the kids just thought he would just take the ball and flip the kid over right there in the, you know, on the volleyball court, and it broke the kid's leg. I mean, it's just like quick. They weren't even thinking about the consequences of their action. They were just reacting to something that they just didn't like. Um, you know, so we've, we've struggled with some injuries this year, which I, I'm shocked to say. We had... Um, a child that came to camp that's 11 years old that was locked in her house for months and gave birth to a child. I've never been faced with that. It's time for the churches and our community to really pour into these kids like never before. And we need to go about a supernatural change. We need to look into the heavenlies for the answers. And we need to know and trust our instincts with the Holy Spirit, and what he's telling us to do. And I'm so grateful to have this opportunity because I know I've always wanted to move the camp forward. Now is the time. And I think it's, it's God's timing. I think that it, he's been waiting on a time such as this. And in closing, I just wanted to um, let you guys know, I, I do have a scripture as well. And this is the scripture that came to me back in 2010 when I knew I need something to stand on. And it's Psalm 71. It's just um, verses 1 through 5. It says, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to hear me and save me. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me. You are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh God my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man, for you are my hope, O oh Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. Amen. I just have one more thing. I just have one more thing just that I thought of when Frankie was talking. So the 11-year-old little girl that gave has already a mother. Um, she's in foster care. And can you imagine at 11 years old being a mother and having to go to school and act like you're normal? 
and, and try to relate to the other children in the school. And then also on top of that, um, the likelihood of that child being victimized again without you know, good proper healing is very, very high. That she'll go to school and some you know, older boy will sniff her out just like a hound dog <laughs> and do things that shouldn't be done to her again. Um, and she's a perfect example of why we need a safe place for kids that are struggling to be um, to heal. And one of the scriptures that comes to me often is the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He steals our and he steals the innocence. He or I'm sorry, he steals our identity. He he kills our innocence and he destroys our purpose. And he's doing that in huge ways with our children right now. And I feel like it's important that we start fighting back um, through the help of Jesus. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Well, thank <laughs> thank you, you so much. much for your time. We really appreciate it. So, Frankie, could you invite all your volunteers and um, Daniel, right, Dan? Those of you who are involved in, in uh, Rock Youth Camp, please, uh, we want you to come up. I want you to come up. Please come up. It's not for applause sake. It's, it's, for, it's for an identity sake. Can you see yourself in this group? Can you see yourself in this group of people whose hearts are, are just pouring out for someone who looks a lot like you and me and is looking for love? I, I'd like to pass the mic and just... What's the Lord put on your heart and share for us? We need to be standing here with you. We, we can't leave tonight without hearing this message and know that we have to participate in a greater way. Okay, would you do that for me? Okay. <laughs> um, this, is the pre this is the president of the Spanish <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Alexa. I'm Alexa. This is Share what Andrea. Bright Futures does for you guys. Um, so basically, with Bright Futures um, and with Miss Frankie's help, because we couldn't be doing this without Miss Frankie and without the Roth, Rock Youth Camp and without these kids, um, we get a don't like scholarship. It's scholarship money to help us to put us through college and to help us study what we want to study without any financial hardships that we may face. It's really, really helpful, and we just give so much thank to God and to these kids who are so <laughs> just full of joy and hope, and they're just beautiful little creatures, and they're, they don't know what they're helping us with, but we're just there to help them, and it's really a beautiful thing. And yeah, it's helping us like go through college without any financial hardships that we may face and it's just it's great and we love Miss Frankie love we love the camp and this is Matthew by the way I didn't even introduce him oh, <laughs> yeah it's awesome you know we get to do good for others in a really nice beautiful way because when you don't have love and you have to like when you come to the Rock Youth Camp and you get all that it's just it makes my heart ache, and it's it's hard to express because I'm also not a public speaker, but <laughs> it's a really awesome thing, and I'm just really grateful to Miss Frankie and the Rock Youth Camp for letting us do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for having us and listening to us, even though we just kind of was kind of word vomit what we just said to you guys. But, yeah, um, here's some more. Yeah. I'm Julie. I've known Frankie countless years. I love her. Don't. <laughs> and I know her heart. I know her vision. And um, I just talk with Frankie and fellowshipping and praying. And we just got to protect our kids' innocence is where I'm at. Okay. <laughs> I am Kara. I'm Frankie's daughter. Um, and I guess just the thing that, that I'm reminded of is 
growing up, even though you say I don't, I might not remember, I remember when the Rock Youth Camp really started. It started out of our house, which was just like a two bedroom home in Tuscany Cove, if you know where that is in Naples. Um, and she would hold camp at 7 a.m. in the morning. And for a kid in elementary school in summer, 7 a.m. is like 5 a.m. <laughs> and I would wake up from my room and hear a bunch of kids in our garage of all places and wonder, what in the world is going on, Mom? Why are you doing this? And um, I, I'm really just reminded that God will use what you have. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't um, think that what you have is, is the greatest tool uh, t in comparison to those around you, that um, God will use whatever you have if you just give it to him to use. So, yeah. That's amazing. You're awesome. Uh, my name is Juan, and I actually married uh, Kara. So that's my mother-in-law right there. Love you, Frankie. You're awesome. Um, very interesting. When I was, I think, around 11 or 12, um, and I'll try not to take too long. When I was around 11 or 12, Frankie was my, my teacher in, in church. She was, uh, uh, I think, in the youth, which, by the way, I, was, I think I was a little too, too little to be in the youth group, but I was. Frankie showed me so much love and so much kindness. And, you know, I didn't think that I was going to marry her daughter at the age of 12. Um, but there was something so special and so beautiful about Frankie's heart um, that spoke to me at such a young age. And there's a, there's a passage in the scriptures, I think John 11, and it shows one of the most beautiful moments that the scriptures have ever really shown or revealed to us. And it's a moment where Jesus loses his dear friend, Lazarus. And some of the most profound words are, are spelled out in really a sentence of three words or two, Jesus wept. And I find that to be such a, a, a violation sometimes of our understanding of God because we think, sometimes we think that God is above our pain or above our suffering or above the things that we go through. And in this specific moment in the scriptures, we see that God is more concerned for the human heart than we could imagine. And we, often, we oftentimes think that, you know, Jesus wept in that moment because people were doubting him or because they didn't believe that he could raise somebody from the dead. But Jesus never doubted the fact that he was God. He knew that he could raise somebody from the dead. See, Jesus wept in that moment because of what the people were feeling, and they felt loss. And I say that specifically to say that if you give to this mission that Frankie started and, and Albani is part of and them together over a decade ago, it really begins with two people choosing a moment to live outside of their own conflict, their own pain, and stepping into the truth of the human experience, which is to have empathy for one another. And that's how the world changes when each of us individually take a moment to step outside of our own self and experience life, a life that is difficult, but hopeful. Amen. So if anything, I would just like to encourage you guys. You guys are awesome. I'm so happy that I, that I, that I get to watch this and to be part of this, and that I married your daughter. Made a good choice, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you cannot leave me now. So is it okay? I don't want to overstep, but can we pray for them real quick as well, and then I'll give it to Dan. Um, Father, we just lift our hearts and our minds, and we pray over this ministry that Frankie and Bonnie are, are commencing, or starting really, <laughs> that started decades ago. Somewhere along their journey, God, you called them. And now that they are reliving all these different moments in their life, they're realizing that you were there all along, calling them for this specific time. And I ask you, Lord, that you would instill in them courage, bravery, and boldness, that they would do what may seem like impossible, which is to be a, a microphone, which is to be a tool for you, Lord, that the souls and that the hearts of young people would be changed through their ministry. So, Lord, we, we lift them up and we ask you, God, 
Uh, we just ask that generosity will pour into their ministry in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I don't know how I got up here, but <laughs> I was, it was the painting, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I've known Frankie a lot of years, and, uh, and I was there in the beginning when she expressed the vision. And, uh, and I, I've been a Christian long enough to know that the Lord gives a vision, and then, um, and then he lets that vision die so that you have to have faith in order to, to uh, see it resurrected. And I've seen her faith be relentless year after year after year. And I said, that's a vision worth getting involved in. And so when there was the opportunity for me to come there and help out by painting and uh, whatever she needed done, and, and really it started out, it was just some land in a house, right? And if you saw it now, you would, you would just be so surprised. So that, you know, we, God gives the vision and we see it in our mind's eye afar off. Like Abraham saw the promised land, but had never been there. But he saw it in his mind's eye, and that's what she saw. And I can tell you that it has come to pass. And, uh, and now we need to support it. Absolutely. Amen. And so um, now Bonnie and Frankie have been brought together by the Lord for a common vision. And it's, it's the same, but it's not as different. It's new. And uh, if you'll check out the table out front, you'll see what I think is a rendering of the next structure, right? As, yeah, the next phase. So as, as Community Health Ranch and Youth uh, Rock Youth Camp come together, there's this whole new synergy, new opportunity. There's two people in the room that are probably too shy to come forward. But let me tell you, the Lord is moving on people with children and those who uh, know children are in need. And so there's these Christian groups coming together, creating co-ops and opportunities for families that, that homeschool. And uh, there's a heart on, of this church to, to minister and, and, and invade into the school across the street. And what church is next to another school? And notice that as we begin to pray into even more fervently that the limitation upon a ministry like this is to our dollars. The access for public dollars is very, very limited because the message of Jesus can't be given in that environment as freely. My wife's teaching now 30 years. She has to be a stealth minister. <laughs> you know, it's just, I'm, a, I'm stealthy about, you know, sharing love. So there's this compassion, but we make no mistake about where it comes from. And, and I pray, God, that you would put upon the leaders of this of this of this land, the school board, we have new opportunities, a new superintendent coming. Come on, put a heart of God on these people that they are bold to speak your word unabashedly, unashamedly, and if the, there's a federal Title I program that says no more dollars, who cares? By comparison, there's no comparison, right? To, to seek the source is what we're called to do. And I hope that as we're here praying, there's a praise report, I know there's, there's that, those who would like prayer, you're hearing a bold speaking, speaking group of people here boldly speaking for Jesus because Jesus has the heart for these children. Amen? Amen. So let's not leave tonight without sharing some more tonight. Um, the mic is open. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Um, before I leave, I just wanted to say... Um, Ms. Frankie, thank you so much. I don't think you understand how much you've done. You are just, she's such a selfless and diligent person. And even to the events that I haven't gone, you've helped our club prosper and grow. And kids have joined our club just to volunteer through Rock Youth Camp and to help these little kids. And you just, you convey that hope and that light that we see in like through God and scripture and everything. And you are just a beautiful person. And Bonnie, um, thank you so much for sharing. It was, we were getting emotional back there. Like it was intense. And it's thanks to people like you guys that we have not only an opportunity to go to school and to just do what we want in life, but it's that those little kids who 
have faced so much suffering without any help or assistance or light or hope that they can overcome that and you guys are just you guys are beautiful people and you're angels walking on earth seriously thank you so much so we've heard this call we've heard this need and uh, I heard uh, Pastor Williams recently talk about there's those of us who do there's those of us who have the money to send and then there's those of us who are fans and uh, uh, let us be either the doers or the senders but let us do the raising up. There's a word here. It's, the word is believe. And there's two people here who believe. And then I, I count 10 people here because I'm going to count myself in that. There's 10 people here who believe. And I know there's two more people back there who believe because I know them very well. I know there's another person there that believes. So we're, now we're up to 13. I know Pastor Andrew believes. Who else in this room believes? Say, I believe. I believe. These children are worth it. This program is beyond i can't even imagine what god's going to do with this because he's the god that, that multiplies so i think there's buckets at the doors if if it's on your heart to contribute you know don't invade your tithe to your church don't go into bankruptcy to give but i'm just going to tell you if there's ten dollars or twenty dollars or thirty dollars that hit the bucket god is going to multiply it and he's and this this ministry is going to flourish because god is the, the god that flourishes amen amen I wanted to share a song that goes along with the oh, message. Is that okay? Yeah, amen. All right, you guys can seat, sit down one second. Thank you, Jeff. I know I have been uh, touched by the testimony and to see the hands and feet of Jesus in our community is something I think we need. We need a purpose this side of heaven. We are not just here to enjoy our lives and go to heaven one day. God has given us a work to do. Amen. And so the Lord gave me this song a few years ago because he made me to know that we are his hands and we are his feet. And what you do unto the least of these, he said, you do it unto me. I was doing all right Church on Sunday And sometimes Wednesday night But then God opened my eyes And He changed my life He showed me someone weaker than me And said, now look into their eyes Jesus in disguise, Jesus in disguise, I see Jesus in the eyes of the weak, who lay down their lives, who will recognize, when sometimes they can't even speak. He said, what you do to the least of these, you do it unto me. Lord, give me eyes that I would recognize Jesus in disguise. When others look our way, what do they see? For how we spend our days shows what we believe. If we don't give the grace that we have received, then we are like blind men. Jesus in disguise, Jesus in disguise, 
I see Jesus in the eyes of the weak who lay down their lives who will recognize when sometimes they can't even speak he said what you do to the least of these you do it unto me Lord give me eyes that I would recognize Jesus in disguise So, um, I don't know, it's been um, an interesting week for me in the sense that this is not the first time, but it's happened several times this week specifically about children and, um, and the importance of what's going on in their lives. And one of the things that the Lord showed me was um, the sower and the seed, and he showed me um, actually in reverse what really happens kids are the good ground and the older they get it becomes thorny it becomes shallow and it becomes hard and so uh, if we're not careful we pour into adults who are already hard and shallow and thorny instead of pouring into kids who are good ground and the enemy knows that and so he really attacks kids he attacks kids in ways that um, is beyond even our understanding. And I think that you actually um, shared the scripture, but sometimes we don't read further down uh, in about that we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, uh, and we do not love our lives unto death. And, and, and then it goes on and says that the, the enemy has been, been released on this earth and he is full of vengeance because he knows his time is short. In a sense, he knows that this time on earth is this time to mess with us as, um, and especially children. And if we're not careful, we allow the enemy to do things that he should never be allowed to do. And once we are a child of God, we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. I was molested when I was a little kid, and I know um, the effect. So the thing is that Frankie, I've asked her several times. She's never come before. This is the first time. So I've asked her, I said, I want, to I want you to share your vision. So this is the first time, but I, I can tell you that it's something that I believe in that we need to have. And Bonnie, of them coming together, they have a chance to buy this property. I know about the property. And, and uh, this neighbor that they have, it's 17 acres, 17 acres. And this person has actually promised them to give this land to them. It's worth Lots more, but for 300,000 or so that they're going to give them 17 acres. If you don't, you don't understand Collier County and 17 acres and three, $300,000. So uh, if you feel led to support or to help in any way or you want to take on a mission project or raise some money or wash some cars and, and support this ministry, but also if you want to be involved in, uh, in connecting the right persons, this is how all this happens. It happens with little connections connecting you to Michael and then Michael connecting to Bonnie and then it kind of goes back and forth. God is at work and God is making some connections in here and I believe that there's some connections that are going to be made forth in this place and then we're going to connect to the children and the children are the ones that are the most precious. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Let's stand together. There's going to be uh, containers in the back back there. You can make it out to rock if you want to. You can make it out, just make it out to the rock, right? And then that way you get it, and then you guys can figure it out. So if you're giving a check, you can do that. If you want to give cash, you can do that. If you want to make a contribution next Sunday or, this, or, 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 or contact with them, don't stop. This is an important ministry that needs our support and our help. And I don't know about you, but there's something inside of me that says this is right. Do you, you ever get that feeling right in here that this is right? 
You know, we always talk about healing and healing, and one of the things we need is our kids to be healed. They're broken. So, Father, we, we lift up this ministry. We just ask for a supernatural miracle to take place. $300,000 is what, Lord, is so simple and so easy for you. And yet at the same time, there's people in this town who can blink an eye and make that happen. Lord, there are children that need to be ministered to. There's needs, Lord, that needs to be uh, brought forth into the light. There's, there's people who need to step out of darkness and stop hurting children. There needs to be a breakthrough in our community of recognition that they need help, they need healing, and they need Jesus. And we're not going to shrink back from that. We're not going to deny that. We're going to believe, Lord Jesus, that you are the healer, the restorer, and you said for the children to come unto you. For such is the kingdom of God. And help us to remind ourselves of that and stir our hearts. And if there's any way that we need to connect to this ministry, reveal it to us, make it known. And I just ask a special anointing on upon Bonnie and upon Frankie, upon all the volunteers at this camp. I ask, Lord, that you would supernaturally just protect that place. And I ask that you would draw them, draw people to this place, draw finances to this place. Draw prosperity to this place, favor uh, it, uh, with the government, with the police, with all the people that are involved, and let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. And I don't know about you, but there's healing in our hearts that took place tonight, even from your childhood.